General Breedlove, we're very interested to hear your views on what you think the biggest challenges are to international efforts to regulate or ban the use of lethal autonomous weapons, known as killer robots or other automated systems, whenever you're ready. Well, thank you, first of all, for having me and allowing me to, uh, to share some ideas. And uh, having listened to three wonderful presentations so far, there are things I'd like to touch on them first, and, and I'll give you a few of my thoughts. They'll all be aligned. I'll agree with uh, Tony that we uh, are probably past banning them. They are going to exist, uh, much like chemical weapons, uh, um, no matter whether they're banned or not, certain nations and entities are going to develop and employ these weapons. And even when they sign on to the agreements, they continue to do them in the past. Uh, Syria being the latest uh, example, and hopefully we will not see Russia do the same here in the next couple of weeks. So I would like to touch on uh, what my original thoughts were to touch on. This is really still very much human in the loop. Um, AI is a broad category. True artificial intelligence hasn't hit the battlefield yet, and it will be a long time before it hits the battlefields. What we're seeing is a subcategory of true artificial intelligence now, which most people call machine learning. And machine learning talk starts, those weapons are quote unquote learned by humans and their patterns of behavior and decision patterns are taught and learned by humans. And it is those uh, human interactions that they take to the battlefield to make decisions. Um, and so I do believe, though, to uh, Professor O'Connell's point, AI is out there in the future. It's a ways out there in the future. But now would be the time to start addressing it, because if we wait until it's on the battlefield, it'll be too late to really try to make any indention on it. Uh, the other piece about um, um, this whole concept of uh, the, the notion of killer robots that just go out and kill. Um, I think we need to realize that nothing is really autonomous. Even when we get to an AI system, a human will have to make the decision to launch it or, or place it in a place, position to be used or have effect. So a human being will be making that decision. And having sat through uh, uh, Satter is not the right word. Having commanded forces in multiple conflicts and watching the way our nation makes a decision about how we accept collateral damage and the impact of these weapons, it is a human decision from top to bottom. Literally, in the most uh, egregious of, of conflicts, the president sets what we call the collateral damage allowable, and then we have very technical programs that help us to guide and understand the collateral damage expected and see if it meets the guidance that is passed down from those leaders above. So I think I'm going to stop there. There's a whole lot more to talk about, but what I wanted to bring to the conversation today is that while we have this notion or feeling that we, we have these machines that are out there making entirely their own decisions. We are not there yet and will not be there for some time. And even when we do get there, there will still be human decisions in the loop of where and how they will be used. And as a, a military person, that is what I was charged with managing on a battlefield. Mm -hmm.